In Creole Parametric, you can perform composite design. In this video, we will take a look at modifying your plies, including copy and paste special, remove ply, materials, color mapping, sequence numbers, and names. Okay, so here I am in my part model. It already has a composite feature. I will left click on it. And then from the mini toolbar, I will choose edit definition. Now I am back in the composite environment, and so far I have about five plies and one core in here. And first I realized, okay, I've got my first ply and then the core. I need another ply at a 90 degree angle to that. So I am going to copy the first ply. I will select it out of the laminate tree, and then I can right mouse click and hold. Here we have the copy command, and then you can either paste it or paste special. I will show you paste special. This will open up a dialog box with an advanced reference configuration option. If you check that and then click OK, it will open up a dialog box with the references from that ply feature. And so you could change them to other different entities if you want to. But in this case, I'm happy with what they are because I want the same ply exactly where the original ply was. So let's click the check mark in order to complete the feature. And if you take a look at the tree, that new ply came in as manual ply sixth, the last one listed in the tree, but I want it to be right after the first ply. So we can grab it and then we can drag it where we want it to appear and then let go. So now I've got ply one, then ply six, and I want that to be at a different orientation. So you could edit definition of the ply and change it, or you can do that from your laminate manager. This next icon in the laminate list is for the laminate manager. I will click on it, and there we have some different columns that are visible. Be aware that you can add or remove different columns. If you click on this icon for tree columns, you could choose what you want to add based on the different categories. For example, apply parameters, and we have our draping parameters, our mass properties parameters, a whole bunch there, and the ply information. But I will just leave these different ones in here. Let's cancel out of laminate tree columns. And now I will go to the ply that I'm interested in. And here we have the orientation. And from the drop down list, I can say that this should be perpendicular to that one. So that's good. Let's hit the regenerate button in order to update the model. Okay, so I am happy with that. Then I take a look at my other different plies in here. So I've got ply two, okay, that's okay. Then ply three, okay, ply four, okay, ply five. That's the one that I created using different edges and intersections of references to create. And I realized I really don't want that one in the model. So we can get rid of it using remove ply. I will choose remove ply. And then for the plies to remove, here's the references collector. You're going to pick it out of the laminate list. So let me grab it from over here. And this will leave the original manual ply five feature in the laminate tree. I'll hit the check mark, but there's now a remove ply feature. And if you take a look, there's a different symbol next to it in the laminate manager. Let me go to the filters. Right now in my filters, I have consumed plies listed as well. When you remove a ply, it is considered to be consumed. This is normally off by default. Let me go back to the default settings and click apply. So just be aware if you remove apply, you are not going to see it by default in your tree. So that's how you can use the remove ply functionality. Now that I've got that removed, I decide that, you know what, just like I have these first two plies located perpendicular to each other, I want to do that for my other different plies in the model as well. So let me select some of my other plies. Let me select, let's see, I think that's this one. Nope, let me see, let's ply two <laughs> and then ply three three and then ply four. These are the ones that I want. I'm going to select those three and I'm going to right mouse click and copy. And then once more you can paste or you can paste special. 
With Pay Special, you have that advanced reference configuration. You can change the references for those different plies, but I'm just going to hit the check mark in order to create them. And then I wanna reorder them just so that they're right after each other. So for example, manual ply seven, that should be after manual ply two. And we can see that those materials are right next to each other. Then we have manual ply eight, that should be after manual ply three. Now we got those lined up. And even though I have manual ply five in here and then removed, I'm gonna grab nine and move it up just so that it is right after manual ply four. And so now I can go about and say, okay, what are the orientations that these should be? Maybe these, this one should be zero, so it's perpendicular to the ply above it. And then this one, maybe I want this to be at 45 and the one below it at minus 45. And then let's leave this one, ply four at zero, and I'll move this one to 90 degrees. So that's good. Once again, we will regenerate in order to update the model appropriately. So that is good for my other additional plies. And then I decided that, hey, you know what? These last two plies, I actually want them to be a different material. So let me select those two plies, and then I can right mouse click and hold. And from the pop-up menu, we can choose properties. And this opens up a dialog box with a bunch of different choices, like orientation and default. Later on, I will change the names and the sequences. But up at the top, this is where you can change the material. And I decide that I want these two to be the LTE 800. So I will select that and then click the OK button. And those two plies are updated with the new material. If you take a look, here we have the color mapping for our different plies. You can change that color mapping for how it appears in the graphics area. To do that, you go to the Setup drop-down menu and here is color mapping. And we have our dialog box with the ply types and the different colors. And I can decide that, hey, you know what, this one over here, maybe I want both those plies to be the red color. So that is good for that one. And the one here, the Eryx, that's my core. Maybe I want the core to be in this bluish color. And then I say, hey, this one over here, let me change this to be in yellow as well. And let's see anything else. Let's change this one to be that same light bluish color. I'll click the OK button, and that way we've updated our colors to the, way, to the way that we want them to appear both in the graphics area and in our laminate list. All right, last couple changes to make. If you take a look in our laminate manager, we have sequence one, then sequence seven, then sequence six, and two, they're all out of whack here. So we need to change the sequences. And so to do that, I'm going to select everything in the list here. I'll select the first one, then hold down the shift key and select the last one in order to get the inclusive list. And then I can right mouse click and hold like before and choose properties. And here we can change the sequence. And for the prefix, right now it has the entire word sequence. Maybe I just wanna use the letter S so I'll just type in S, and then the number to start with, and then the step. And I'm used to production operations. Maybe I want it to start at number 10 and go by a step of 10. Or you could go by starting with the number 1 and incrementing by 1, whichever way that you want to. Apply and OK are grayed out right now because you need to, need to hit the Enter key to make sure it takes the value. And I will click the OK button. And now if we take a look here. We have S10, S20, S30, S40, etc. It is incrementing by 10. Now I decide that I need to change the names of the plies because the plies are out of order as well. So to do that, I'm going to take the cores out of here just so I can select the plies. Let me go to my filter and then I'm going to turn off the display of cores in here and click the OK button. And so now I've just got the plies. Let's try to rename the plies. I will use the shift key to select all of them. And then I will right mouse click and hold. Let's go to properties. And here we can change the name. And for the prefix for them, well, let's use the word ply, P-L-Y. And then let's start at number one in this case and use a one step. 
And there's an option here to skip conflicts. I'm not going to check that. Let me hit the enter key so it takes that step value. I'm going to click the OK button. And because I did not skip the conflicts, it says, hey, these objects could not be renamed. It had a problem with ply number five, that one that I used the remove ply function on. So let's close out of here and then cancel out of here. Yes, I want to cancel. Once again, I can go to the filters and display the consumed plies and click the OK button. So this is the one here that is causing a problem in the model. So if you get rid of the remove ply function, either by suppressing it or by right mouse clicking and deleting it, well, getting rid of the remove ply operation is going to bring that ply back. But I actually just want that ply out of the model. I don't want to use that at all. So let's select its parent feature, the manual ply five feature in the laminate tree, and then choose the delete button and click the OK. And now I can go about renaming those plies. Let me select the first one and then hold down the shift key and select the last one. Right mouse click properties. And for changing the name, let's use a prefix of ply. And once again, we'll use a start number of one and an increment of one. Let me hit the enter key and then click OK. And now it's renumbered them so that they appear in the logical order. Let's not forget to display our cores. I will go back to my tree filters and then display cores. Hey, you can display consumed cores if you want to. I know I don't have any, but you can display them if you want. I'll click the OK button. And there we have our core appearing after our first two manual plies. So there you have it. Those are a bunch of different ways in which you can modify and manipulate your plies, including copy and paste, remove ply, materials, color mapping, sequence, and name.